So let me tell you a story about the East India Company, where for once, somebody in the East India Company spoke out against the wrongs that the company was doing. And this led to an entire parliamentary battle. Entire parliamentary Hi hi. Entire parliamentary Parliamentary. Okay. <laughs> entire parliamentary battle in England. Hi, I'm Misha. And I'm Areej. And today we'll be talking about Joseph Davy Cunningham and his book, The History of the Six, and how that inadvertently led to this whole court battle, which brought into question the Anglo-Sikh Wars. For a detailed video on the Anglo-Sikh Wars and the impact the British had in the fall of the Sikh Empire in Punjab, we have another video. But for the sake of this one, just an overview of the Anglo-Sikh Wars, essentially the British kind of manipulated the Anglo-Sikh wars into happening and what happens is that they kind of use that to take power from the Sikh empire in Punjab and make the prince, the king at that time, Dilip Singh, into like a puppet ruler and they take control of Punjab and other areas through kind of coercive method. Here they kind of use a lot of traitors, they pay off a lot of people and you can get like a lot of detail into the video I mentioned. But other than that, what this does is people start to question that what is really happening? Are these wars really justified? And here enters Joseph Davy Cunningham. He was the assistant agent of Bahawalpur and he worked under Henry Harding. And he saw these Anglo-Sikh wars up close and he saw the impact they had in Punjab and the nearby areas. And so he set out to write a book called The History of the Sikhs. Now, keep in mind the history of the Sikhs is essentially him exploring the religious aspect of Sikhism, but he kind of ties in all these truths that are kind of dangerous to the East India Company and reflects negatively on their behavior in Punjab. And the timing of his book also mattered because Cunningham's book came about while the process of annexing the Punjab was happening. And he did feel this urgency to kind of publish his book and get the truth out there before everything set in stone. Now, the official story the East India Company had told back home in Britain was essentially that these wars were kind of, you know, pushed upon them and they had fought back. And this was a result of them valiantly fighting. But what the thing is, neither the British public nor the parliament had any true idea of all the details. And this quickly came apparent and it came up in parliament because people felt that the facts were being kept from them. And this came about in February 1849, where a very leading MP called Mr. George Thompson kind of appealed to the then John Russell government to put forth the facts in front of them. He said that the parliament should have access to all the papers regarding the Multan episode, referring here to the Second Anglo-Sikh War, and to both of the Sikh wars and how all the information needed to be given to them because he felt that what was present right now was not enough to justify a war and landed the East India Company into murky waters. So Hobhouse was basically the head of the board of control and he wanted to make a case against Thompson. And what he did was that he used Cunningham's book, A History of the Six, but he used it in a very manipulative way. He would only quote certain passages of the book and he would leave out the important information. There is a passage where Cunningham is basically you know, building up towards a point and he's putting in some sarcasm. Hobhouse was just used the sarcasm part, leave out the actual bit. Now, during this whole time, Lord Dalhousie back in India, in the East India Company, um, who was working with Cunningham, he didn't really want to fire him because he knew that this guy, Cunningham, actually has gotten clearance from the Board of Britain to be able to publish his book and he has made sure that it's all legit and he's not revealing any company secrets. But just because Hobhouse is displeased, he really wants to get him fired and he does manage to do that. So action is taken against Cunningham on 13th of June, 1849. Hobhouse actually expresses his satisfaction and I'll quote, I'm glad you have commenced operation against Captain Cunningham. I say, as I said before, that an example is wanted to show that the company servants are not sent to India to write libels against their superiors, but to do their duty at their respective posts submissively and honestly. So Cunningham actually tried to defend himself in court, but that failed. And a lot of people later blame Lord Dalhousie for not being able to protect his subordinate. And as I mentioned earlier, Dalhousie did try. Lord Dalhousie was actually preparing a letter to kind of fight for the case of Cunningham. 
But he received a letter on the 1st of September 1849 from Hobhaus, which basically stated that every soldier and every man in East India Company who worked for the annexation of Punjab would be given a medal and would be, you know, basically awarded for this. This kind of made Dalhouse suppress what he was doing for Cunningham and he let the... And the letter also stated that Cunningham needs to be fired and all for this to happen. So Dalhousie just let it happen. So I guess in a way, you know, I understand people who blame him. The thing is, Cunningham's book actually put a question mark on how unprovoked the wars in Punjab was. Because if you remember some of our previous videos, people from the company, when they're narrating in their diaries as to what happened, they make sure to mention over and over that the war is unprovoked, that, you know, they were forced to do this because there was no other option. But just the fact that, Cunning that Cunningham came out with this book and he mentions in it all the underhand treaties and all the ways that the war was actually won, it sheds a beautiful light into the actual truth, you know. And now we can actually decipher what went on. However, the sad thing is that Cunningham's career as an officer or as a historian basically came to a quicker end because of the displeasure of the authorities in Britain. So this was a story of Joseph Davy Cunningham. Let us know what you think about him and how this all played out in the comments below.